it's that time of year again. Today we're going to go over what you need to know for this Mercury retrograde, all the do's and don'ts for the transit, and an extra important date you need to know. So stick around. <music> Stefan Peel from Shared Reality here to welcome you to yet another Mercury Retrograde. I realize this is one of the most talked about, most feared transits in astrology, so I'm hoping to dispel a couple myths and help you make the most of this time. Now, Mercury already went retrograde yesterday, May 10th, at 4.47 a.m. PST, and will continue on that trajectory until June 3rd. And if the memes and pop astrology articles are any indication, we are emotionally and spiritually in for a shit show. While every good joke has a kernel of truth to it, thankfully, most Mercury memes miss the mark and don't provide a full picture of what Mercury retrograde actually is. Mercury retrograde actually happens three times a year. And if you include the shadow periods before and after, each Mercury retrograde lasts almost two months. So that's about six months out of the year that we spend in this planetary configuration. That's half of every year totally half of your life, basically. So if you follow the conventional pop astrology wisdom to not start any new ventures or make any deals or sign any contracts or travel, you're severely limiting the time you have to make those things happen for yourself in this lifetime. Instead, it's much more beneficial to view these retrograde periods as opportunities for growth. Now, there will no doubt be some frustrations, but every hiccup you encounter is all for your betterment and your personal evolution. Mercury is named after the Roman messenger god. You may know him better as Hermes, which is his name in Greek mythology. He served as messenger to all the other gods on Mount Olympus, which is why in astrology, Mercury is the planet of communication. But he also ruled over wealth, good fortune, commerce, travel, and thievery. So you can see why Mercury retrograde scares some people out of contracts, travels, and new business undertakings. And while it looks like Mercury is moving backwards from our vantage point here on Earth, we know that its orbit actually follows a loop, completing a kind of oval orbital pattern every 88 days. This is significant because the frustration and challenges Mercury retrograde brings up in our lives are not just random annoyances. They're emblematic of things and issues and people from our past that remain unresolved and need to be dealt with. So don't dread Mercury retrograde. Be grateful for the opportunity to finally confront, overcome, and break free of these patterns that are holding you back. And if you're one of my lovely subscribers who's trying to manifest their ex back, you'll be pleased to know that Mercury Retrograde is a time when people from our past, especially exes, start coming up out of the woodwork. So that's good news for you, but might be a bit burdensome for others. Still, no matter your situation, this Mercury Retrograde will certainly offer you a real chance to grow. It's important to note these opportunities are always going to present themselves in the style of the sign Mercury currently occupies. And 2022 for Mercury is all about progressing towards the Earth signs. Back in January, we experienced Mercury retrograde between Aquarius and Capricorn. And this go around will be between Gemini and Taurus. So in both instances, it's going from air to Earth. This journey symbolizes our ability to manifest. How do you pull an idea? Pull a dream out of thin air and put it into action. Manifest it into physical reality on this earth. We get so caught up in the go, go, go nature of our society and that push for forward momentum that the backwards motion of a retrograde can feel a little jarring at first. But the delays and the hangups you experience during this time are actually opportunities to step back, take a breath, and reassess that everything is aligned, that all your ducks are in a row, and that you actually want to proceed in the direction you're headed. So what are the do's and don'ts for this Mercury retrograde? Do, be introspective. Do, schedule extra time for everything so you're not frustrated by the delays that you know you will encounter. Do, assume that plans will go awry, that technology will mess up, and that communication will probably be more difficult, not only in expressing yourself, but in interpreting others as well. Do, dot your I's and cross your T's. You wanna make sure if you do proceed with any contracts or agreements that Everything is looked over thoroughly and is to your liking. Do be patient. Use this extra time to journal, to self-reflect, to reanalyze, to get organized anew. Don't take yourself too seriously. You can still learn from your mistakes while laughing at yourself and making light of them. Don't pause your life. Yes, these might not be the absolutely ideal weeks 
to sign a contract, but what needs to be done needs to be done. If you need to move or start a new job or something, don't be afraid to. Just be mindful and cautious about the terms of your agreement. Don't reinvent the wheel. While I'm all for trying new things, this is not the time to totally change up your approach or your routine. There'll be enough challenges demanding your attention without adding that extra layer of stress of trying to take on some brand new way of doing something. Now the date I want you to look out for and make the most of is May 21st. This is a very auspicious day because it's when Mercury arrives at zero degrees Gemini in an inferior conjunction with the Sun, which means Mercury will be stationed between us here on Earth and the Sun. This is known as the Mercury Kazini. Now, Kazini in Arabic actually means heart of the Sun, so it's when the light of the Sun's rays fully shine on a planet. These moments, these Mercury Kazinis, are known to bring about big aha moments, personal revelations, and epiphanies. So May 21st is a super important day to have your notebook on hand to jot down any important things that are revealed to you. It can also be a beneficial day to set aside some time to journal and let the words just flow from you without judgment to really see what's inside waiting to come out. It's a great day for contemplation. Now, if you're anything like me, you're already feeling the effects of this transit heavily. I actually wasn't sure this morning if it was just my depression creeping back or what that had me feeling so unlike myself. When my friend reminded me of the planetary configuration, I was like, oh, that is where this is coming from. So just remember to be gentle with yourself. We only have to navigate this retrograde through June 3rd and a couple weeks of the shadow period for those of us who are extra sensitive to the energies. But still, don't take it too seriously. Don't take yourself too seriously. Don't take life too seriously. Just enjoy the journey and be grateful for whatever life throws at you during this time. Because ultimately, as with everything you experience, it's all for your greatest good. Well guys, I hope you got some benefit out of this video and that it helps you make the most of this transit. If it did, please drop a like, drop a comment. It really helps my channel and I really appreciate it. Maybe even just comment May 21st below so people skipping through the video can still know what date to look out for. I'm so grateful for you and I know in my heart that we will all make it through this transit and come out better for it. So I think I'm gonna end it there. If you're new to this channel, please be sure to hit that like button and the subscribe. And don't forget to hit that little notifications button too, because I'm committed to bringing you three new videos a week so we can all continue learning, growing, and not only survive, but thrive in 2022 and beyond. Thank you. Love you.